So go ahead and take your seated position just to get centered for class. And uh, we're coming into a backbending practice. <clears throat> we're going to carry on with the Ahimsa theme just because it's really relevant with backbending to honor the non-harming philosophy in our bodies, but also with our thoughts. Um, sometimes with these backbends, we're not getting as far as we'd like to, and there can be some, some harmful thoughts that might occur um, against yourself. So it's a great um, cycle, uh, weekly cycle time to discuss Ahimsa because we can really apply that to our, what's considered one of our more challenging um, sets of yoga postures. So find your way into your dominant crossing and take a moment to just adjust and arrange yourself so you find the alignment, you find the balance between foundation and the ascension. You find also expansion, you find a broadness in the body that stems from extension. And when you find all of that, then bring your hands together in front of your heart. Close your eyes and point the gaze down away from the brain. Bringing your attention to the lowest parts of your body and just acknowledging where you meet the earth, what parts of your body feel like anchors. Bring a sense of release into the upper inner thighs and the hips, releasing the roots of the thighs, releasing the weight of the femur bones. Feeling the connection of the sitting bones. Taking some time to pause and start moving into the state of mind that's more receptive. Becoming the observer rather than the director. On an exhalation, bow toward the heart without losing the lift and spread of your chest. And then releasing your hands, lifting your head and letting your eyes come open. Welcome. So we're gonna come into hero pose and take it into Pariyankasana, which is a supported back bend. And if you're not, if you're gonna substitute hero pose, you can either do a cross-legged position or you can take bound angle pose, like Kathleen, if you wanted to take the bottoms of the feet together um, as an alternate, you can also just cross your legs for Pariyankasana. But we're gonna start with hero pose or one of those alternates. And because we're going into that reclining position from whatever seated position you're taking, you're gonna to wanna to set your support up right now. So it kind of looks like um, a bolster if you have one, something big that's gonna support right behind the chest. And then I usually add something that will support my head, like a block. And it's not quite as high as the chest support. If you're really tight, you might want to raise the height of what's supporting your chest. So adding a blanket, adding two blankets, adding a block under a blanket. There's lots of ways you can do it. <clears throat> and of course, if you're taking hero pose and your sitting bones don't touch down, then give your sitting bones some support with yet another prop and take some time to adjust. We're gonna take the first few minutes here in seated version, waking up the spine. So roll the shoulders back, move the tailbone in, sit up tall. If you need propping for your knees or hips, Kathleen, you can use them, of course. And once you feel really anchored with the lower half, the base of the pose, we're going to raise the arms and take the arms up and extend the torso. 
And without the shoulders coming toward the ears, lengthen the sides of the trunk. And take hold of your opposite elbows. On an exhalation, angle the right elbow up, the left elbow down. And anchor a little bit extra into your right shin or right hip point or right sitting bone if you're seated. On an inhale, bring the forearms back to level position, re-extend your arms, and then just change the crossing of the arms. Inhale here, exhale, you're gonna tilt the right elbow down, left elbow up, and rebalance the weight of the legs and the sitting bones. Encouraging the side of the trunk to open, but also encouraging the spine to move in a sideways way. Just like forward extension, we can gain a lot more depth in our back bends if we work the spine in other ways, like twisting and lateral movement. So inhale back to center, re-extend your arms, and on an exhalation, twist to the right. Taking your left hand to your right leg, your right hand behind you. Help yourself turn. Broadening the chest. Keep your chin right over your sternum so that we, we can really know that we're not leading our twist prematurely from the upper spine. Let it develop from the lower points climbing higher. Gaining some height with every in breath and encouraging that twist along with the out breaths. Finishing up the exhalation. Inhale, raise the arms, come back to center and exhale, move to the other side. Right hand to left thigh, left hand centered behind you, maybe propping it on the props behind you so that you don't have to lean back. Stay for five breaths. Finishing the exhalation, inhale, raise the arms, Come back to center and exhale, release the arms down. So you may just know, this is where non-harming starts to come in. You may not directly be able to come down all the way. You might have to move to a half position if your spine is kind of reluctant. So just start kind of easing yourself back to the reclining version of hero or whatever seated position you're taking. And as you're able to, lower down. But things to watch for are, we don't want the knees pulling off the floor. We don't want the knees separating. So honoring the integrity of the pose as you kind of make your way into a deeper version. And if you're kind of in a mid position like I am, you have to create your own support behind your chest. So as you might be able to see, I don't have anything touching my upper back. I'm actually having to use the actions of the scapula lifting into the chest to create that foundation of support. So it's actually a little bit harder if you don't come down all the way. But just maintaining the integrity, maintaining the idea of non-harming here. Take the tailbone toward the ceiling and keep driving the knees down toward the floor. And yeah, Shoshana, you might be harming that knee injury, so I'm glad you adjusted out of it. Good. Extend the arms overhead if it's available to you. We're going to be making our way up now. So leading with your breastbone, keep your shoulder blades supporting your chest. Bring your head up. Don't let it come up last. And to relieve the legs and take forward extension from here, we're going to find downward dog. So we're going to get all six actions in, the sixth one being the forward extension of downward facing dog. So it starts to kind of deconstruct your setup, moving things aside. And once you have cleared your hat, Find your way to table pose. 
As you're ready, curl all 10 toes underneath. So you have extending toe tips coming toward your hands. On the exhale, extend your legs. Keep your hips back in space. So one thing that's not quite obvious is how much the flexibility of the legs impacts inversions. And today we're going to be focusing on forearm balance with a back bend. So we want to really engage the legs and we want to get the legs really supple. So we're going to take downward dog, walk the dog style. So start to step the heels down individually. And it really depends on your body. Some people feel better just kind of walking in a quicker way. Otherwise, you might descend the heel and stay for a couple breaths on that side. So just kind of create your own experience here, either kind of walking with every exhale, heel down, or staying for a few breaths on each side. But as you kind of work with the legs like this, don't forget the integrity of the upper body. So sometimes the upper back starts to round when we do this. Imagine someone's just gently putting their hands on your upper back and keeping those shoulder blades in towards your chest. You can also imagine someone's holding your hips and not letting them go anywhere so that your hips aren't wobbling around as you do this. And just take a few more moments with this. And then come into your deepest version of downward facing dog where both heels extend toward the floor. On an exhalation, you're going to raise your left leg. So we start with the sacrum really level across. We're going to be opening our chest out to the left. So go ahead and bend your left knee. And now tilt your hips so that you're stacking your left hip over your right and you're looking under your left arm. And let that left leg drop as far to the right as you can so you're accessing the left side body and you're bringing your chest out of the shadows. You're getting some nice movement along your spine. Start to rotate back to level hips and re-extend the left leg and then gently lower it down. Make sure your shoulder blades have moved in, your chest is close to your thighs. On an exhale, raise the right leg. Start with level hips. Bring the right leg as high as you can. Then bend your knee and then turn the hips to stack position right above left, looking under your right arm. Dropping that right foot as far to the left as you can. Good. And now start to rotate back. Level hips, extend your right leg, and lower the right toes down. Take your knees to the floor and sit back for child's pose. Just sinking your shoulder blades toward the floor. Lifting the inner upper arms up toward the ceiling and then countering that by rolling the inner wrist down toward the floor. This is a very important action for forearm balance. Inner wrist toward the floor, inner upper arms toward the ceiling. Good. Come back to table pose. We're going to come into heart chakra pose to really get the chest nice and open. So come to the back of the mat so you have the length of the mat in front of you. Put your knees hip distance. Keep your thighs in a vertical position and start to walk your hands forward. So don't let your hips follow. Keep your hips locked. Again, the idea that someone's holding them where they are. Lower your chin and chest to the floor. And work with the same actions on the arms. Roll the inner wrists down, lift the inner upper arms up. Taking the shoulder blades into the back with every exhale, gravity is helping you a lot here. With inhale, draw some length through the crown of the head, like the crown of the head is magnetized toward your thumbs. Keep rolling the inner wrist down and lifting the inner upper arms up. 
There's three more breaths. Now to come out of the pose, you're gonna kind of round your back and shift your weight forward. We're coming into Sphinx pose. So come on to your, your front side. And stack your shoulders above your elbows. And start with your palms up. Good. And just take care of your legs. So take a moment to center your legs. Make sure your small toes are sitting down as much as your big toes are. Lift your inner thighs up. And take the tailbone deeper into the body toward the floor. So first we're going to, in Iyengar, they use the term fix. We're going to fix the upper arms first. So with the palms up, let's focus on the upper arms. You're trying to roll the flesh of the inner upper arms out. So if there were arrows, they'd be coming from the inner upper arms to the outer upper arms. And then from there, keeping the upper arms fixed, rotate palms down and really press inner wrists down. Notice how there's a tendency when you press inner wrists down to lose the fixation of the upper arm. So try to do both. Lastly, we're gonna really teach this um, action of forearm balance here in this laboratory that's a little bit less intense. So clamp your elbows toward each other without them actually moving a lot. Just kind of clamp the elbows toward each other because our elbows tend to go wide, which narrows the shoulders. So if you clamp the elbows, it keeps your shoulders broad. It keeps the integrity of the upper back. Okay, look forward and just hold your sphinx pose. And see if you can maintain what you have in the upper arms, what you have across the chest, as you pressurize your hands and fully extend the arms and shine the inner elbows up. Extended sphinx. Lift your inner thighs up. Rotate the flesh of the inner upper arms in outward spirals. Roll the inner wrists down. Go ahead and release. Let's release the back by crossing the arms, bending the knees, and sweeping the legs back and forth. Just clearing any tension, any stuck energy in the lower back. So we're going to kind of use some prone poses to teach the, the building blocks of forearm back bend. So we're going to come back to sphinx, but now we're going to work with the legs a little bit. So see if you can just kind of restore what you've created with your forearm, your elbows under your shoulders, inner wrist down, inner upper arms rotating out, clamping the elbows a little bit. Awesome. Take the tailbone deep into the floor. On an exhalation, begin to lift your left leg, creating a, more of a back bend and observing that your tailbone keeps moving into the floor and that you're not losing any of the integrity that you've created in the upper body. Lift your leg. Keep lifting your inner thigh. So kind of taking a little bit of a locust pose here to teach how these actions that we train the upper body to do have to only intensify as we lift the leg, as we work the legs, as we work the back bend. Go ahead and lower. Take a pause here if you need it. Reset the legs, reset the arms. Come back to wise actions in the arms if you kind of let them go for a moment. And on an exhalation, begin to raise the right leg. And I'm just teaching left side first today because that's my camera side. So as you raise the right leg, watch that you're not losing the openness of the chest, the arm actions that they're not kind of falling apart and the tailbone keeps having to move toward the floor to keep the lower back long. It is the anchor. Good. Go ahead and lower the right leg down. Cross your arms, rest your opposite cheek, bend your knees, sweep your legs back and forth. Full locust pose. So stretch your arms back, 
towards your knees, towards your feet. And take the palms to face up toward the ceiling. Extend your fingernails towards your feet. Look slightly forward. And on an exhalation, raise everything off the floor. Try to lift the wrists so that they're shoulder height. Shoot the breastbone forward. Deepen the tailbone. Move it into the floor. Extend the lower back. Good. Keep winding the inner upper arms out. Exhale. Release. Cross your arms. Rest your cheek. Bend your knees. Sweep the legs back and forth. Lastly, Dhanurasana, which is wheel pose. So Kathleen, this might be a one-legged wheel um, because of the knee limitation with the bend. Uh, but we're going to be clasping the ankles with the hands. And then we're going to step the knees in so they're only as wide as your hips. I find it useful to flex my feet so that my toes are making their way back to pointing toward the floor. It increases kind of the support of my grip. So you'll notice here there might be a big gap between your pelvis and the floor. So fix that, correct that, take the tailbone into the floor. Look forward and lift your inner thighs up as you draw your small toes down. On an exhalation, pick everything up, keep the knees only as wide as your hips. Spread the flesh across your chest. Soften your gaze. Can you find repose in the pose or non-harming effort in the pose? Quietness. Go ahead and release. One last time, windshield wiper legs. Sweep the legs back and forth. and make your way back to child's pose. You're gonna take a minute in child's pose. Grounding the forehead, extending the arms, keeping the wise actions going in the arms, inner wrists down, inner upper arms up and out. Drawing the hips, away from the wrists. Feeling a broadness across your back, across your sacrum, across your shoulder blades. Quieting the brain. And now we're going to be setting up for a series of lunging positions. Um, we did this Monday, if you were in class Monday. But it's a really great set to warm up the legs, the hip flexors, the front thighs, and of course the back bend. So kneeling blanket, if you like to use one when you're kneeling, you could put a blanket down at the center of the mat. And you may want to use your blocks. So just have them nearby whichever end of the mat you're going to face. The first position we're going to do, we're going to have the right foot forward, the left knee down. So this is a series that kind of moves from mild to more intense. So take your hands to your hips, draw the elbows in behind you, Push in on the tailbone, tip the pelvis back, and create a vertical torso. So we're starting with 90 degree knee on both sides. If you need more without shifting your torso into an angle, so in other words, if there was a book on your head, it wouldn't be falling, you're gonna exhale and move forward if you need more. You're gonna open that front of your back leg, the left hip flexor. Keep your tailbone moving in. Notice how that action has to increase as you shift your weight forward. 
Keep the elbows clamping and the shoulders broad and the chest broad. And just spend a few more breaths here. Good. So now we're going to kind of dig in a little bit to right hip space. So we're going to angle the torso forward. Take your hands down to the inner space, so in, inside the right foot. And you can be on your hands here. There's lots of options for the arms. Angle your right toes out 45 degrees. Yep. So this is lizard pose, and we can really start to get into the right hip space. For a lot of us, this is too mild. So you might come down to your forearms, or you might need a mid-step, in which case the blocks are a great kind of halfway point. If you want to get your forearms down and take it a bit deeper, you can prop your elbows on your blocks, but keep your elbows in line with your shoulders. And the idea is not to let that right knee fall out to the side. So clamp the right knee in a little bit. Breathe and find a nice smooth back of your neck. So you could bow the head if that feels good. We are going to do side angle pose and revolving side angle pose. So notice what depth you found with this right leg. We want to kind of keep that when we come up into those standing poses. We want to keep this depth, the 90 degree knee bend, the deepness into the hip joint. Awesome. We're going to keep the right leg as it is. We're going to revolve the spine now, twisted lizard. So come back to your hands, maybe on those blocks, maybe on the floor if you came down over the forearm. Keep your left hand down. Grab hold of your right knee, just kind of cuff your knee or your thigh. Now you can push that knee out a little bit wider and turn your chest to the right. Attempt to stack your right shoulder above your left. Attempt to bring the left armpit chest around out of the shadows. Extend through the top of your head. Imagine there's a, a top knot there, a bun, and someone's pulling it gently so your spine lengthens. Elements of a twist. We always want to protect the length of the spine so we don't telescope as we deepen the twist. Good. Wonderful. Squeeze out the next exhale and inhale yourself out of the twist. As you're doing great. Full hands down. So we're going to curl the left toes under. So here's what I don't want to happen. As you we're about to extend the left leg, don't lose what you have going in the right leg. Imagine that you have to keep your thigh as close to the floor as, as it is now. So without disturbing anything, curl your left toes under, extend the left leg completely. Good. And again, you might go to that low position here. You might stay on your hands. Keep squeezing the right knee into the shoulder. Keep your left leg as straight as you can. Breathe. If you came to your forearms, you're going to return to your hands on the blocks or floor. And now we're all pivoting the left foot to ground it. We're coming into side angle pose. So pivot your left foot so you're grounding the bottom of the foot and the outer foot. You're going to be facing the left side of your mat. You can either prop your right arm on your thigh or keep your right hand where it is. Take your left hand to your left hip. Good. Bring that right armpit chest around. Extend through the top of the head. Don't let your head fall. Now take the top arm to a vertical position. Rotate the arm so the palm faces towards your head side and align the arm with your ear for revolving side angle pose. No, for side angle pose. Not yet with revolving. Good, roll that right buttock under. Go ahead and bring your left arm down and pivot back off of your left foot. Wonderful, we're going to now take revolving side angle pose. So before we do that, fully extend the left leg. So this is, Sometimes what happens, people have, they think it's straight, it's not fully extended, it's more powerful. Left hand stays down, right hand to your right hip. On an exhale, revolve your torso to the right. 
Clamp your right knee in as it does like to go wide here. Right shoulder above left. Squeeze your hips together. Draw the outer hip in of the right side. Again, maybe the top arm goes up. And maybe we revolve the arm and align the arm with the side of the head. Leg flexibility, spinal mobility is really going to help us with that inversion that we're kind of working our way into today. Forearm balance. Go ahead and find your way back to your right block. Okay, last but not least, a full lunge. So keeping yourself here, take your hands to your hips and see if you can bring your torso up. Keep the left leg extended. Clamp the elbows, move the tailbone in. Good. Yes. Book on your head. We did it. Bring yourself gently down and you're going to step your way back to downward dog. So don't put your hands on your blocks here. Hands on the floor. Step back with that right foot and take downward facing dog just for a couple breaths. And then taking child's pose for another few moments before we come into left side of the sequence. All right. So we'll stop. The left foot forward, right knee is kneeling. And the very first stage, we're with the upright torso, the 90 degree left knee, and we have the right hip just above the right knee. Elbows pulled together as you hold the hips. Tip the pelvis slightly back, lift and spread the chest. And if you need more, slide forward without tipping the torso forward. We're going to stay for about five deep breaths here. Look straight ahead. And one thing to always remember in back bends is the head likes to pull forward. So keep your head right above the spine. Let your chest pull forward instead. And if you did shift your weight forward, start to pull back so that you have the knee lined up again with the ankle. We're going to turn the left toes out 45 degrees and we're going to move our hands right inside the left foot. Clamping your left knee to your left shoulder. And again, if you need more, you're going to come down to your forearms or to your forearms on blocks. You might need that kind of mid height position. Just keep squeezing left knee toward the shoulder and just kind of investigate or keep your attention on your left hip, mining that hip space. We all have lots of tension accumulating the hips. You notice children have really open hips and some people believe all the rules we've ever been taught live in our hips. So as adults, we have very tight hips because we follow a lot of rules. <laughs> So just kind of breathe into that, releasing those tight hips. Bow the head, keep that neckline really neutral. And just give it a couple more breaths. And after clamping that left knee in for a while now, it's gonna feel really good just to kind of push that knee off course out wide. So come back to your hands if you're on forearms. Keep your left, sorry, keep your right hand down and just grab hold of the left knee with your left hand. And now just kind of push that knee out wide so that you can start to make clearance for your chest to point off to the left. Extend through the top of the head. Move your shoulder blades in. 
Good. Get the upper back moving into the chest a little more. Lynn, if you can. Getting some nice mobility on your spine. Good. Lift that crown up a little bit, Lynn, if you can. Like there's a bun on the top of your head. Someone's pulling it. Lengthen your spine. Good. Squeeze out the last exhale. And now gently come out of that twist. Return your left foot, so toes point forward. And put both hands down. This is where we're going to extend the right leg without disturbing anything else. So keep yourself deep into the left hip here. Curl the right toes under and start to fully extend the right leg. And not quasi fully extend, fully extend. So compact the right leg front to back. Extend the heel toward the floor. Extend the right toes toward the top of the mat. Look forward, see if you can roll the inner upper arms out. Breathe. Got to let Shoshana back in here. Yes, good. Side angle pose. So from here, pivot the right foot to grounded position. You can keep the left hand down or you can prop the left forearm on your left side. But we're going to take the right hand onto the hip. And we're going to roll that right shoulder to come above the left shoulder. We're going to roll the left buttock under. Lengthen through the crown of your head. And stay deep in your left hip. Top arm comes in. Start with the vertical arm. Turn the arm from the shoulder and align the biceps with the ear. Good, make your way back to grounding your right hand, facing the floor and pivoting off of your back foot. So that was side angle, now we're coming into revolving side angle. So from here, right hand stays down, left hand comes to the left hip, keep your right leg fully extended, clamping that left knee in, don't let it go wide, and start to turn your chest to the left, rolling that right armpit chest under so you can bring it forward, you can get it out of the shadows. Maybe taking that top arm up, revolving it and aligning it with the ear. Beautiful poses. Notice how you want to push into the left hip, draw the left hip to the right. Beautiful. Nice choices, good, everybody looks good. Bring your hand down, full lunge. So from here, you're going to get powered up to bring the torso up. So stabilize the lower body, take your hands to your hips, bring your torso up. Keep the back leg extended, push in on the tailbone, spread the chest, clamp the elbows, stay deep into the left hip space, fully extend the right leg, compact it from front to back. Good. And now bring your torso forward. We're going to step back to downward facing dog. So if you have things in your way, just kind of make some room. Step that left foot back. And then make your way to child's pose once again. Resting in child's pose, quiet the brain. Make sure your forehead comes in contact with something. You could put it on your fists, on a prop, on your hands. Good. And just spend a few more breaths here. So when you're ready, you can come up and just kind of watch for a moment the setup. And I, I always want to remind everyone that 
when we come into these more challenging poses, you can take as much or as little of it as you want. Um, there's always something to take away from it when you do inversions, even if it's not bringing your feet off of the floor. So what we're gonna do today, you just watch for the beginning, is we're gonna set up our forearm balance but holding the chair legs. And when you hold the chair legs, your wrists are, it's, it's more challenging to get the wrists down, but I still want you to try to get your wrists down. So it's kind of an awkward hold on the chair legs. But from there, you'll be curling the toes under, extending the legs, walking in, maybe playing with one leg up at a time, just to kind of get your bearings and build the stability, maybe coming up. And then the chair is there, you might start to slide your feet toward the bar. Okay, so that was a fast forward kind of version. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the chair up against the wall and we're gonna go through all those pieces slowly. And again, you can stay where the most in integrity is for you today. So this pose, forearm balance, when we start to bring the back bend in, it starts to move into a pose called scorpion pose, which is a very beautiful pose done freestanding on your forearms where you bring your toes down to your nose, essentially. <laughs> so we're going to be kind of breaking it down and just getting a little taste of it. Okay, so the first piece is, once you have your chair against the wall, is to kind of set yourself up so that you're grabbing the chair legs and your forearms are grounded. And we're going to spend a little time there because the arms are really important, the action of the arms. So even though you're grabbing those chair legs, roll the inner wrist down. Start with your knees in line with your hips. Good. And now curl your toes under and extend your legs. So Shoshana, you could just work on dolphin pose if I don't know if you're going to do it or not, but dolphin pose is just without, are you going to try it? I don't know if you can hear me or not. I can't hear you. Okay, so let me talk through the rest of the pose here. With your legs extended, raise one leg at a time. Just kind of feel what happens when you take the leg up. Ex straighten the leg though, John. Straighten the leg, There, straighten it out. There you go. Good, and then step down and then straighten the other leg. Take it up, beautiful. Okay, so then you might need a rest. You might do what you just did again after that rest. You might be able to, next time you extend your legs, kick up and take the feet to the wall. Good, Shoshana. Yep. Yeah, so taking, kind of pace it yourself, ahimsa, non-harming. Good, you might need a little momentum there. Remember the action of cl clamping the elbows in. So yours are getting a little wide, Lynn. Good, you made it, good. And don't start with the feet on the chair. Start with the feet high up on the wall, the legs pretty straight. Good. Yeah, and when we work like this in new ways, the body has to overcome some of the, just kind of the foreignness, the, the kind of the weirdness factor. Good, so tailbone toward the camera. That was good, Lynn, you're making progress there. Kathleen, these are looking great. Good, Shoshana, your legs look awesome and straight. Okay, so let's all take a rest for a moment. This is, of course, advanced. So if you want to, for the next attempt, you could come into your forearm balance without the chair so that you're closer to the wall so there's less of a back bend incorporated into it. So it's good that everybody tried this, but if you're still kind of mastering forearm balance, the, the clean line straight up and down inversion, then this is just kind of a down the road thing but it's great that you attempted it. So for the second attempt, decide if you're going to use that chair again, or if you're gonna move the chair out of the way and maybe put a block between your hands, maybe even belting 
the uh, elbows or right above the elbows and then trying the inversion that way. And I'm just gonna watch. Good. Good, Lynn. Awesome. And then that way you could start to play with the knees, bending Lynn, walking down that wall and noticing how it requires more. Yes, beautiful. Good work. Yeah, okay. And now as you're ready, you're gonna start to leave the pose and taking a resting position, either child's pose or some other position that quiets you down. All right, so we're gonna take a, um, a twist. We're gonna come into Bharad Vajrasana. And you can do this in several ways. So classically, we're taking one leg in hero and the other leg either in the half lotus position where you're gonna have your foot up into the kind of the crease of the groin and thigh, or you'll have that same foot kind of cross underneath your hero leg. So let's start with the right leg in Virasana. And um, I always forget, Kathleen, I think it's your right knee that's limited. So you could kind of have a more obtuse angle there if that is your right leg that needs the modification. But find your way into the right knee and hero or some modified version of that. And then like Lynn, I know, can take lotus position pretty easily. You might be bringing your left uh, foot up to that crease. And if you see a floating knee here, you'll want to prop that. I can't, your knee cuts off right below the camera line. So just make sure, I think it's good. Yeah, it looks good. Um, so I always take a little height underneath my uh, not hero leg side to level the pelvis. But that being said, um, sometimes you have to just acknowledge that this pose is pretty imbalanced. You're never going to be 100% even but to give yourself a little bit more balance can create more stability. So just make sure you're not feeling like you're completely falling off to the side here. So John, uh, right leg in hero, the left leg either in lotus position or the left foot um, ankles crossed so that you see your left toes moving out to the side, your right toes moving back. Okay, so either position is gonna be fine for you, beautiful. All right, so we're gonna be twisting the pose. So start with your left hand next to your left hip, raise the right arm, and really consider the right leg as your anchor of this pose. So on an exhalation, we're twisting to the left, you're gonna take your right hand to the left thigh, palm down. Slide your left hand behind you so it's centered, and you'll probably need some height under that hand because we don't wanna lean back to reach the floor. So put something under, between your hand and the floor if you're leaning to get there and just start twisting well to the left. But again, remember the right leg is your anchor. So roll your outer right shin down if you're in hero, extend your right knee down if you're in a different pose. And now move to the back of the right hand against your thigh. And notice how it helps you bring the right armpit chest area 
around. Finishing the exhalation. Inhale and release. We're going to come into stage two. Yeah, good. So stage two is taking left hand and grabbing right arm from behind. Okay, so hopefully everybody can get that. For me, this is a real challenge. Always has been. I always blame my short arms. That's my excuse. But <clears throat> whatever it is, you may also work with a strap. So sometimes I do use a strap, and today I might need one. We'll just have to see. But what we're going to do is try to throw the left, sorry, the right hand over to that outer left thigh. So take a big in-breath. On your exhale, just kind of throw it over there. See if you can get contact of the back of the hand to the thigh. Yeah, it's a big old twisted doozy of a pose. But notice how that ha helps you roll that left shoulder back farther. Okay, so if it's not quite coming, grab your strap and you can hold your arm with a loop around, uh, take a strap around your right arm and hold the end of the strap with your left hand. Then you have more clearance. Yeah, that'll work better, Kathleen. So take your strap, where is mine? I can't see it. But take it around your right arm. Put a loop around your right arm. Yeah, and John and Lynn, if you want to come out, you can, but I want Kathleen to get this. Good, and then from behind, grab your strap ends. There you go, Kathleen, now you have more space. On an exhale, throw the arm. And see if you can get that right hand. Yeah, that's better. Feel how it gains a little bit more depth. Okay, good. I don't know where my strap went, otherwise I would have shown you. All right, so we're gonna leave that. You'll get another chance on the second side. So to come out of the pose, make sure you're coming out. I like to always come out through Marichyasana, which is just less wear and tear on the knee. So you'll step your feet kind of down. We're gonna come into Dandasana, just to extend the legs and relieve the legs and equalize the knees before second side. So I like to include deeper twists in back many practice because they're very, um, they equalize the practice. They start to kind of uh, lower, uh, downregulate the nervous system is what I'm trying to say. So just press your legs into the floor, leave the legs, and then we'll be setting up second side. We'll do the two versions of Bharad Vajrasana. So now the left leg goes into the hero position or some modified position. And now the right leg is either going to be in that half lotus position or tucked underneath the hero leg. Toes moving out to the side, left toes pointing straight back. Good. So give your right side some extra support if you need it, so that you're not completely kind of dumping everything off to the right. So first stage, we'll just keep right hand next to the right hip. Inhale, raise the left arm, and exhale, palm down to the right thigh. Right hand slides behind you and give it some height if needed so you don't have to lean back or angle your torso. Anchor into your left leg. Remember, that's the anchor, and our twist is only going to be as good as that anchor. Roll the outer shin down if you're in hero. Drive the knee down if you're in a modified hero. Perfect. Finishing the exhalation, inhale back to center. And now with the right hand from behind, grab your left arm or take a strap and loop it around the upper left arm to kind of create a little more space for yourself. And today, if I had a strap, I'd be using one because I'm feeling very tight today. So in breath here, on the exhale, throwing that hand over to that right thigh. And I feel like we forgot to do the palm out version that first attempt, but we're getting it now. Bringing that left armpit chest around, anchor into your left leg. Roll that right shoulder back. Breathe. Beautiful. These look great. Finishing the exhalation. Inhale, lift and lengthen, come out of it. And then again, finding your way out of the pose through those Marichyasana legs, just so that you don't have to 
torque your knees anymore. <clears throat> Extend the legs and just sit up tall for a moment, pressing your legs into the floor, stacking your toes above your heels. Trying to squeeze the backs of the knees toward the floor. Okay. And now we are gonna do shoulder stand in a similar way that we did forearm balance. And of course it's optional, but the idea is that we can take the feet to the chair and start to feel a little bit of a back bend and shoulder standing. So if you wanna try that, you're gonna put that chair again against the wall. Is that right? I've gotta think about this for a minute. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Okay, and then you're gonna set your blankets up and get yourself set up. So um, <clears throat> when we were in the studio, we always kind of taught to make the blanket sandwich with the mat if you need traction. So always use that version of your setup. If you need a little more traction, if you feel like your shoulders tend to slide. I'm gonna grab another blanket. taking the strap around one arm if you're gonna use it. So take time with your setup. It's just in general always a good idea. <clears throat> We all know the story of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and how one little mistake made in the beginning can <clears throat> affect the whole thing. And the chair is actually really, I love using the chair because it helps us get up into the pose. So even if you're not going to try the back bend, it's a great way to explore getting up into the pose if that part of the pose is awkward for you. And if you want to watch, you can here. I'm just going to get myself ready to demonstrate. So with my feet on the chair, I'm able to lift my hips in a really good way and take some time to get my shoulders exactly where I want them, to get my strap on my arms, to take my hands to my back and to start to draw the elbows in. And then I'm gonna spend a little time there. And then when I feel ready, I'm gonna extend my legs up. And when I feel like I need that correction, I can go back to my chair with my feet and help myself adjust. But also, as you see, I'm starting to really get into a back bend here. So the chair, the feet to the chair can really help you explore back bend in your shoulder stand. But it's also a great tool to refine the alignment. After some time in shoulder stand, we all know it can start to disintegrate. So we can use that chair to restore the integrity and create the alignment that we're looking for. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out, but I wanna see you guys now. I'm gonna come out slowly and safely. Nice. And I hope your chair doesn't slide, Lynn. I hope you have that stabilized somehow. Good. John, get your shoulders a little bit farther up the blanket away from the chair. Just a tad, like an inch. Yeah, that's better. Kathleen, that looks awesome. Lift with your legs. So John, I'm seeing a problem with your setup. The blankets um, are folded too narrow and your elbows are lower than your shoulders. So you're gonna wanna open those blankets up so that your shoulders and elbows are on the same plane. And I know you're probably trying to work with uh, less blankets, fewer blankets. 
and you try to double them up, but it doesn't work so well that way. Lift, lift, lift your legs. Good, beautiful. And Lynn, I don't know if you came down to that chair already, but if you have it in you, I'd love to see it. <laughs> so close. Yes, yes. Beautiful. So another way you can work if that seat of the chair is too low is you can turn the chair around and use the high bar of the chair for the toes. Do you have wrist? Oh, okay, yeah, you got wrist discomfort going on there. Yeah, take a break. So if you do come down, just stay down. Oh, yeah, you wanna go back up. And you got those elbows up, good John. Nice. Once you feel stable there, John, then you might explore taking the feet to the seat of the chair. You might also save that for another day. Only you can decide. Yeah, yes. That's awesome. Good job, John. That's amazing, good job. And Kathleen, I don't know if you explored reaching for the chair. Maybe it's not in the cards today, but bringing one foot to the seat of the chair and then the other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about one leg at a time. I would prefer both for you, Kathleen. I mean, for everybody, but I'm talking to Kathleen. So if it's not quite ready, I don't want you to hurt yourself because what happens is we need to keep the torso stabilized. So if your torso is coming with your legs, that's not good. So I think for today, you should stay where you are, Kathleen. Yep, and Lynn, since you're starting to come out, just um, once you're down, you're gonna slide towards the head side and rest the legs, keep the sacrum elevated. Awesome. Nice ekapadas, John. Those are looking really good. Lift, good lifting, Kathleen. The two of you look like you could be there all day. <laughs> and we are gonna start to come out. So you decide whether you're gonna bring your feet down to the chair or behind you or above the head, I should say. Yep. And then once you have come down, sliding to the head side to lower the shoulders and head onto the same level surface. Nice, John. Good. Good control. Good sliding back. So bound angle position or crossed ankles. And if you're crossing ankles after about a minute, just switch the crossing of the legs. So you can stay here if you would like for Shavasana, or you can start to set yourself up for that fully reclined position. And as you make those adjustments so that you're in Shavasana, just attempt to do so in a way that's quieting, it's not going to reawaken the sense organs that we've already kind of started to dial down.
and take some time setting up so that you feel the support that you need after back bending practice. The back can be a little bit um, energized or needs needing of support. So you might take a folded blanket or bolster behind the knees. Support your head if needed. And with the eyes closed, begin to invite the body to become very heavy. Not only releasing your weight into the floor, but sensing that the floor is kind of rising up to meet you there. Softening the skin of your face. Softening the brow line. Releasing your cheeks. Any tension in the jaw. Relaxing the tongue back to its root. Sensing your breath without trying to control the flow of the breath. Just being with the breath. Each passing wave, wave of eternal presence. Sense your energy. Shavasana is really where the way we treated ourselves in our practice shows up. If there's an afterglow or an aftermath is the question. Reminding yourself there, there's no wrong answers. Maybe there is an aftermath. Notice if there's judgment. Now, and harming applies to not only deed, but thought. If you can give up the resistance in the body, you might be able to start to give up resistance or push back in the mind. Entering that stage of Shavasana, we call it allowing. Some people call it go with the flow. But whatever presents itself, really just an open mind and open heart. One sage at the end of his life finally answered his disciples' question, what is the secret? And his final words to them was, I just don't mind what happens. True sense of allowing whatever is there to be there with space, with non-judgment, without reaction. I'll spend these final moments here, letting your breath breathe you softening at a cellular level, softening the heart. Notice how the practice makes us more pliable in both ways. I'm 
maybe a few deeper breaths want to come through, just honor that. Drawing more inhale in, releasing more exhale out. And if you've taken those deeper breaths, starting to find your way back into the automatic breathing breath without controlling it. Begin to move in a gentle way, starting at the extremities and letting the movement work its way toward your center body. Bending knees and elbows and eventually shifting to either side of your body. And from your side, take some time, not in any rush to come up. And treat this moment here on your side before you're coming to seated as the segue between our practice on the mat and off the mat. You can always consider that your practice is throughout your life, not just when you're on the mat. So as you move from sideline to seated, try to conserve your energy, try to keep the senses quieted down, stay present, all those things. So that we can connect these great lessons we learn on our mats into the rest of our day. Find your way to seated and join the hands in front of the heart. Sit up tall. Just bring a little bit of a lift to the corners of the mouth. Giving thanks for whatever is true in your life today. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. And let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. Great. Excellent work today, you guys looked awesome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you next time. Have a beautiful day.